Apple Keynote isn't just for presentations. You can actually create and edit full videos right inside a Keynote, including images, animation, camera video, voiceover narration, music, and sound effects. You can create and edit your storyboard or slide deck into a polished video right inside a Keynote if you want to. Let's jump in. All right, for my example, I'm gonna use six slides from this documentary project I storyboarded inside a Keynote. I am gonna make sure that my video is gonna be 4K. So to do that, I go over to the right here and where it says document, and I make sure the document button is set. And you can see down here where it says slide size, I created custom. So let me just show you if I go custom, I can enter in a resolution. So the resolution for 4K is width 3840, height 2160. So I have a 4K uh, keynote project now, hit okay. So I have my six slides and it's gonna be slide one down to slide six that I'm gonna be using for this example to create a video. So each of these slides right now just has an image on it. So the first thing I wanna do for my documentary video is I wanna record and edit a voiceover for each of these slides. So I'm gonna take this first slide and we're gonna add a voiceover to it. So with the slide selected, I'm gonna go over to the top toolbar here and select the media button. And down in this list, I'm gonna select record audio. And up comes the record audio tool. Not much to see there, <laughs> just a big red button. Basically what to do, what you do here is you hit this button to start recording. But before you start recording, you wanna set up your microphone. Make sure the right mic is selected and the level is uh, you know, at a proper level. So to do that, I'm gonna go up to the top left of the interface here, way up here to the Apple icon, select that, and I'm gonna to go to system settings. We wanna go down to sound, and then down to output and input, and make sure input is selected. So this is where your microphone's gonna be. So in my case, my microphone is connected to a USB audio interface, which is the Rodecaster Duo. So you see Rodecaster Duo Chat, that's my microphone. And you can see down here as I speak, the input level meter is moving. Now, if you're using a USB microphone directly attached to your Mac, you're probably going to see a slider here that allows you to adjust this input level. One bit of advice, you can see that my input level is sort of peaking at the third to last uh, dot here. That's a good level. That's where you want to be. You don't want to be up here at the top, the last dot because if you're sitting there, most likely your audio is going to be distorted. So just make sure you adjust as you're speaking as you would for your voiceover, very important, into your microphone and then adjust the slider or the level so that it's sitting around the third to last dot. Okay, so that's good, I'll close out of system settings. All right, now we're ready to record our voiceover. So I'm just gonna hit the record button and you can see I'm recording now. You can see the waveform is moving here, it's being recorded. So I'm just gonna pause and read this little script segment here. In the middle of a quiet forest. And that's it, so I'll hit stop. And then there's my recording. Now to review my recording, I just hit the preview button here button. And you can see I'm recording now. You can see the waveform is moving here. It's being recorded. So I'm just going to pause and read this little script segment here. In the middle of a quiet forest. Okay, so I don't want all that preamble in my voiceover for my slide for my documentary. So I can edit this recording. Real simple. Go up here to the top right, hit the edit button. And now I have this trimming interface. So I can play back I can move my playhead here in this interface and I can play back my recording, hitting the preview button. I'm gonna pause and read this little script segment here. In the middle of a quiet, so there's the actual part of the voiceover or recording I wanna use. So I'm just gonna grab the playhead and put it there. And then I'm just gonna drag the blue bar, the left one here and bring it to the playhead. And then I'm going to hit preview again. In the middle of a quiet forest. Great. And that's where I want it to end. So I'll grab the right blue bar and drag it over to there. And I can preview again. In the middle of a quiet forest. 
And that's the segment I want to use. So all I have to do now is hit the trim button and then that's trimmed. And here is the segment I want to use I'll hit preview. in the middle of a quiet forest. Excellent. So I'm done. I'll hit done. And I'm back into the recording interface and I'll hit insert to actually place my recording on the slide. And there it is, this little speaker icon. That is my recording in the middle of a quiet forest. So what I like to do with the voiceover here on the slide, I like to drag these over to the left, just off the slide and place it here. So it's off the slide, it'll still play. So don't worry about that. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and record uh, voiceovers for the rest of my slides for this example. All right, so I've added a voiceover clip to the remaining slides in my example here. Go back to the first slide here. And you can see here's my voiceover sound clip right here. And if I select that and I go over to the right here and select format, I have settings for my audio clip, this audio clip that's selected. So I can change the volume, which is kind of important. Um, I can also go down here and choose to repeat it. I don't want to do that. I just want it to play once. But here is what's important. Start audio on click, which means I have to click the forward arrow key or click my or yeah, click my mouse, left mouse button in order to play the audio. I'm going to deselect that. So now the voiceover clip will play automatically. Play across slides. I don't want to do that. I just want to have this clip play on this specific slide, so I'll deselect that as well. Now I'll go ahead and do the same thing for the remainder of the voiceover clips. So the next thing I want to do is on this fifth video here, you can see, sorry, fifth slide here, you can see it's blank. What I want to do here is add an on-camera video clip as part of my video. So with that slide selected, I'll go over to my finder and I'm just going to drag in a video clip that I recorded right inside of QuickTime Player. And there it is. So I have my video here and it's not quite full screen. So I'm just going to adjust it so it's full screen. And I'll just use the guides here, these yellow lines showing up to make sure there. And now with this movie selected, I can, I can actually trim this video right inside a keynote. So I go over here to the top right again and we can see we have style. I'm going to select movie. And this gives me controls over this video clip on my slide. So I've got controls like volume and then can play here. But more importantly, I can trim by going down here. So what I'm going to do is trim this video so I can use the proper take. So I just grab the left trim handle here. And as I do that, you can see the video is scrubbing through. So I'm going to go here to the beginning of the take that I want right here. I think it's like there. And I'm going to grab the end too, because I know there's some tail on this. So I'll take it, drag it till I finish. There. So now I can play this. In this episode, the unseen and tragic disaster behind that strange door in the forest. So down here in the rest of the settings for this video clip, I have repeat. I don't want to do that. I don't want to start the movie on click. I want it to start automatically when I come to this slide. So I'll deselect this. And I don't want to play the movie across slides. I just want it to play on this particular slide. So I'll deselect play movie across slides. All right, so now what I want to do is build up the soundtrack for my video here in Keynote. So I'm going to add some music first. So I'm going to grab a music track from my finder. And with this first slide selected over here, there it is. I'm going to drag and drop my music clip or track right onto the slide here. And you can see the plus. And usually what I like to do is place music and sound effects to the right of the slide, just off the slide. And again, my narrations to the left. So here's my music. And you can hear, you can see with it selected over here in format audio, we've got the name of the music file. I've got controls here so I can play this. And there's the music playing. 
and I can control the volume here, which is kind of important when we have music playing with this voiceover on the slide. So I'm just going to play and bring this volume down to say half. So it's not drowning out my voiceover. Let's see, the, the music starts to build. Okay. So I don't need to trim it. I want it to play from the beginning to the end. But over here, I don't want it to repeat. So I'll leave this set to none. And I want it to start automatically. So I'll deselect start audio on click. All right. Now I do want this music to play underneath all these different slides. So I'll leave play across, play audio across slides selected. However, to, to have this music play underneath all these different slides, I need to copy and paste this music clip to the different slides. So I'll do that. So with it selected, I'll right click and select copy. I'll go to my other slides and I'll quickly just paste the music to the other slides. All right, so I've pasted the music to all the slides, including the on-camera slide here. And here's my music over here. I'm going to select it, and I'm going to bring down the music just a bit more, like say to there. And so now the music will adjust accordingly, according to my settings, on this particular slide. All right, for my final piece of audio work here, I'm going to add a sound effect to go underneath these slides. So I'm going to select the sound effect from my finder and I'm going to drag and drop it onto this first slide here. And here it is. Now again, I'm going to go up here and if I play this, you'll hear it. And it's birds, it's sort of forest kind of ambience. I'm going to bring the volume of this down quite a bit because I just wanted to just a hint of it. I don't want it to be too overwhelming. So we'll try it at this level here. Again, down here, repeat none, not for this. I'm going to deselect start audio on click. And again, I'm going to leave play audio across slide selected. And like the music, I'm going to copy and paste the sound effect to the different slides that I want to play it in. All right, so I have all my elements in place here on my slides. I've got my images, I've got my voiceover, I've got my music, I've got my sound effects, and I have an on-camera clip. So let's move on to actually editing this uh, video together. All right, with this first slide selected, I'm going to go over to the top right here. And I'm going to select Animate. And so what this is, is the transition between the different slides. So I'm going to transition between each of these slides and it acts kind of like an edit or, you know, switching if you had a switcher. So right now we have the start transition set to on click from this menu. I'm going to select automatically. I'm also going to change the transition right now if there's no transition effect the slide is just going to cut from one slide to the next i'm going to select add an effect here and i'm going to have a dissolve and i'll leave it at 1.5 so you saw the preview there 1.5 seconds is nice you can see that smooth dissolve great okay so now you can see it says start transition on click again i don't want to do that i want it automatically but here's the key if I leave this setting here, you can see it says delay 0.5 seconds or half a second. What's going to happen? Watch what happens. I'm going to play back this slide. It, and it just a strange transitioned story. real quick. It, it transitioned automatically, which is what I want, but it went so fast. It was half a second. There wasn't enough time for the voiceover to play out or anything. So to fix that, I'm going to go back to this first slide. To fix that, I need to change this delay setting. And so what do I change it to? I need to change it to the duration of the slide. And so what is the duration of this slide? Well, that is determined, at least in this case, by the length of the voiceover. So I have to change this delay setting so that the value in here is the time or the duration of the voiceover. If we go back onto the slide here and we go back to our voiceover clip that's on the left by just right clicking on it and going to edit recording. 
and we get our recording, our voiceover recording uh, interface here. Now, if I play this, watch this time area here at the top of this interface. If I preview and play it back. In the middle of a quiet forest, that is the duration of this voiceover clip. So that's three seconds. So I'm gonna make a note of that, three seconds, or write it down. I'll exit out of this by Xing here. Now, I'm gonna go back over by selecting or clicking off of the voiceover clip to select the slide. Go back over to animate. And you can see again, we have our dissolve. This is our slide transition. Now in delay, I'm gonna put in three seconds because that is the duration of the voiceover. And there it is. Now let's play back and watch what happens, or I guess listen for what happens. In the middle of a quiet forest, there lies a strange so you steel see door. The duration setting or the delay allowed the voiceover to play out and then it transitioned to the next slide. And that's kind of how you edit in Keynote. You use slide transitions and you use the delay field to determine when to switch from one slide to the next. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through the rest of my slides and go through my voiceover clips and find the durations and add those in as delays for the slide transitions. All right, so finally, we wanna turn what we've created here in Keynote into an actual video. So to do that, I'll go up to the top slide and select it. Then I'll go up to File, Export to Movie. And here are the export settings. Now, I'll make sure that playback is set to self-playing, it's the only choice because we don't have a slide recording, so it's self-playing. Now for here, I'm not gonna export all my slides and turn them into video because we only use the first six. So I'll select a range of from one to six. I'm just gonna zero out these, uh, go to next slide after. Now these are only if you have your settings set to um, on click which I don't, but I just like to zero these out just in case they affect something. Now for resolution, I'm gonna go to custom and you can see 3840 by 2160 came up because I entered this before. This is 4K resolution. I wanna export a 4K video. So that's the proper resolution. Uh, frame rate, I'm gonna leave it at 24 frames per second. Um, HEVC, that is a compressed format that is used by Apple. So you could take this and use it in, in iMovie or in Final Cut Pro. So I'll leave it as HEVC. Um, color space SDR is fine. I don't have transparent background, so I'll just deselect that. And then I'll save to export. Apple Keynote is secretly one of the most flexible video creation tools for beginner and pro content creators. Once you know the little tricks like I showed you here. So go ahead and try editing a short project in Keynote and tell me in the comments how it went. And if you want more Mac-based editing hacks, make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one.